Wheel of Time got its first teaser two weeks ago, and people are already wondering when we're going to get the promised full-length trailer. Today, we may have an answer. Now, today in the news, we'll be taking a look at Comic-Con, new photos and articles about Season 1 filming, Season 2 information, including a new director and new filming locations. We'll also have our past contest winners and a brand new contest for this week. So join me as we break down all of the news and notes about the Wheel of Time from this past week. Before we get into the news, let's first hit the spoiler warning for the video. Today's video is going to carry a spoiler rating of red, but only through the first book of the series. If you have not read Eye of the World, there are going to be some plot points that will be spoiled for you. If you have read it, you are good to go and you can watch this video. So diving right in, let's kick things off with a sad anniversary. This past week was the 14th anniversary of Robert Jordan's passing. He died on September 19th, 2007 of cardiac amyloidosis. I can actually remember the day and how heartbroken I was that a man that I had never met was gone. It's strange the connection that books can bring. The community that sprang up around his books was remarkable, and the story that he created has resonated with so many. Obviously, channels like this wouldn't exist, but more importantly, the books are a rallying point for the community, and without that, these large communities of people that have come together, become best friends, met their spouse, all of those things would not have happened without the legacy of Robert Jordan. Thank you, Robert Jordan. You will always be remembered. So let's transition to one of the bigger news stories from the past week, and that came in the form of an announcement from the Wheel of Time show account of a panel at the New York Comic Con on Friday, October 8th, at 2.30 p.m. Now, the announcement indicated that the panel would have cast members as well as the showrunner, Rafe Judkins, so it's fairly exciting because this is going to be more than just the Rafe Q&A from the last Comic-Con panel. Moreover, this is on the main stage at Comic-Con in New York, which is an enormous convention, by the way. Now, it does appear that the panelists are going to be remote, but there will be folks in attendance in the audience at the event. There are digital tickets that you can get for 20 bucks if you don't wanna to fly to New York. I have mine, you should definitely get yours so you can watch while you should be working. So what are we gonna get from this? I I've heard a lot of speculation about the release of a full length trailer. I certainly think that's possible. I think the show comes out in November, so releasing a full length trailer a month ahead of time is not really outside the realm of possibility and it's something that Amazon has done in the past. That being said, I am probably leaning in a little bit more into them playing a short clip of the show. I have no reasons for saying this other than it feels like a hunch, feels like something they would do. I could easily be wrong. I just think they're more likely to play a clip of the show and then answer a few questions about it than rather a full length trailer at the con itself. I have a feeling that we will get that trailer soon after, but for the convention audience, I think they wanna do something exclusive, just my thoughts. So anyways, this is just a guess from me. Let me know what you think in the comments of the video uh, and really Really, would you rather see a full length trailer or like a five minute clip? Let me know in the comments of the video. We'll do a little short informal poll. So before we go any further into the news though, I wanna thank the video sponsor, NordVPN. If you are a regular user of the internet, if you get on and do online banking, if you travel, if you do anything where your information could be compromised, you should really have a VPN. Do you know that your internet service provider not only tracks every single website that you go to, but it stores that data and they often sell it. A VPN protects your browsing data. It disguises you online so nobody can track where you go and what you do. It provides a real level of privacy as well. It keeps people from tracking your location and your movements. It can help protect you while you travel, while you're doing online banking, or anything else sensitive on the internet. It's really a must. Honestly, you should always have one and you get to watch other content from other countries. If there is content that is geo-locked, meaning you can't watch American Netflix and you live in Europe with a VPN, you can. So the good news here is this. They are already pretty fairly cheap, but you're going to get a better deal because you're one of my viewers. Click the link in the description of the video and you're going to get a massive discount on the already low monthly cost for NordVPN. They're already the number one provider of VPNs in the world. I'm proud to partner with them. I've used them longer than they've been a sponsor. Click the link in the description of the video. Get your discount. Get yourself protected. You will not regret it. Let's get back to the video. So let's hit on some other big news that I think has a lot of people talking. There is a new article about the Wheel of Time in the upcoming October version of Entertainment Weekly, 
with some new photos. Now I haven't read the article yet as it is not out, but there is a photo from that article that is circulating around and it implies something that we were not expecting. The photo on the screen right now is a part of that article. And as you can see, Maureen and Lan stand in the village green in front of the ruins of the Winespring Inn. Now, while the inn is not completely destroyed, half of it certainly is. In the trailer, we saw scenes of a fight on winter night and Maureen and Lan protecting the town. But in those visuals, the town and the inn itself seemed largely intact. What it seems like we were witnessing was the first wave of that attack because the photo looks like Maureen and Lan are standing in front of sheer devastation. Now, on one hand, this is very obviously a change, as the Winespring Inn is completely untouched in the books. The Trollocs lit a few fires as diversions in the town, and then they focused their attacks on where the boys were at, like the Alvor Farm, the Smithy, and the Cawthon Farm. Now, the point of this was to show that they were after just the three of them, and that is the reason the boys had to skip town. Now, we don't have the full story here yet. We don't know why the Winespring Inn would have been hit by the Trolloc. Maybe it's a diversion. Maybe one of the boys ran in there. Maybe Moraine accidentally hit it with lightning defending the town. All all of those are possibilities as well as many other things. For me, the only important piece here is that it is obvious that the Shadowspawn were after the boys and that they need to leave. How they get to that moment can be altered slightly. As long as it's entertaining, as long as it drives the character arcs, and as long as it hits the main plot points. So if they're able to make those things happen, I actually like this change. To me, the actions of the antagonists on the show need to feel impactful and real. I don't want a super, super dark show but I do want real consequences and I want tension surrounding the people that we care about. And I want the violence to feel realistic. Having the Winespring in the center of the town's political, economic, and social life destroyed in the attack symbolizes the end of innocence for the village and for the boys and Egwene and the separation of the community as the boys need to leave. So I like this change if the earlier points I talked about happen. So what do you all think about the Winespring Inn being half burned down? Are you okay with that change? Let me know in the comments of the video. So let's shift focus here and talk about some season two information. Now the first piece here brought to us by Geeky Eerie over at Wattseries.com and then confirmed by Brave Judkins and a Deadline article confirmed that Sanaa Hamry will be directing the second half of season two. Now that's implying that she's going to be directing four episodes. Now this was previously reported as speculation. It seems she was attached to the show, but now we have confirmation and that she is directing more episodes than any other director in the show. She's also listed as an executive producer for the second season. Sanaa is a fairly prolific director with massive amounts of television directing experience. Her largest role so far has been as the executive producer and director for the majority of the hugely successful series Empire. She has also worked on Elementary, Shameless, Desperate Housewives, and literally almost 60 other directorial credits. She's clearly taken over a large role in production. This does, however, appear to be her first fantasy property, though. I don't know that that necessarily means anything, but let me know what you think of this in the comments of the video. So we also have another news story from whatseries.com who obviously do absolutely fabulous work. They have discovered a couple possibilities for filming locations in season two of The Wheel of Time, which is currently in production right now. Let's first hit a couple of locations that are in Prague, where the main base of operations for the production is located. The first is a Renaissance era villa named what's on the screen. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that, which is referred to as the Star Summer Palace. We don't know what was filmed there, but we do know that there were drone shots completed in August. They are also filming at the quarry at that, which is another location I'm not going to attempt to pronounce. That's a location that was used in season one. Wattseries.com previously speculated that this was used in filming for The Blight, but that is just speculation. There are also two studios in Prague that we know there have been filming at. One is obviously Jordan Studios, which is the headquarters for the Wheel of Time, and it's a massive complex where they film most of the indoor scenes. The second is a large studio in Prague, Barendoff Studios. Then they have also discovered some filming in Italy. The area that they're filming in Italy is apparently known for whitewashed towns, farmlands, and olive trees. It's a part of Southern Italy, and it is beautiful as all of Italy really is. It's unknown what they are filming there, however. So in some quick community news there have been a couple things going on currently that i think are worth note first my good friend lauren from the youtube channel unraveling the pattern matt hatch from the dusty wheel 
and Omar from WattSeries.com are currently at the FanX convention in Salt Lake City. They're participating in some panels for the Wheel of Time. One of the panels is a panel on the upcoming TV show, and the other one is on the fandom in general. Now, this is super cool. Look for content from those guys about the convention and their experience there. I think it's pretty awesome. It's really cool getting to see Wheel of Time creators getting larger spotlights as the fandom grows. Another big piece of community news, congratulations to John over at the Watt Up YouTube channel for hitting 10,000 subscribers. That's a huge feat. Last week, Lauren from Unraveling the Pattern hit 10,000, and this week, Watt Up did. It's amazing how much this community is growing. Congrats to both of those guys. Okay, so let's hit our contest winner. Our winner this time around is actually someone that I have chatted with in voice chats for years now, and is known as the Queen of Discord by some, specifically me, and that is Dana Lu Hu. Congrats, Dana. Message me on Discord and I'll get you a copy of the map. And seeing as you guys seem to enjoy these map contests, let's do another one. This time around, a map that I have not been selling yet on shopwheeloftime.com, but I will be here in the near future. So this is gonna be an exclusive, you will get it first. We are going to put the Tarvalin map up that was completed earlier this year. It is a scale representation of the size of the island and the White Tower, and each building was placed individually on this map, so you can zoom in really far. So how do you enter? Well, just like always, you need to be subscribed to the channel. We'll do this one on Twitter as well though, but this time around we're gonna do a little different. This time I'm gonna post the map on Twitter just like last time, but you will need to retweet the tweet of the map using a the quote function on there and say that you wanna enter the contest to win the map. So subscribe to the channel, then quote retweet the map saying that you want to enter the contest and if you win, I will send you a copy of the map. So everybody, that is the news this week. Make sure to let me know what you think of everything in the comments of the video and do not forget to check out NordVPN and make sure you are protected on the internet. Make sure also to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel as that is necessary to appease YouTube and then they will like my videos more. Too. Huge, enormous thank you to patrons. You make this channel and the giveaways that I'm doing possible. And you are also helping me create something behind the scenes right now that will be announced in the near future that I think will be very exciting for the Wheel of Time community at large. There is a cryptic tease. If you want to support my channel on Patreon, just click the link in the description of the video and check out my page. Thank you all for watching. And until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on a rope of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy oh so free. Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?